Hello and welcome again to the F14 back seat. Now, there are a lot of videos that go in very great detail how to use this radar here right in front of me. This is not one of those videos. Uh, what we're going to do today is just go over the workflow when you're approaching targets. Now, what I've done in preparation is I've went into RWS and set it to the widest and highest scan setting, highest meaning with the most bars, but still be with antenna elevation being level. And I've enabled data link, that's why we see several data link contacts in front of us. So they are not radar contacts, they're purely data link tracks being transmitted to me, and that's two hostile tracks coming towards me, and a further hostile track circling behind them, and we see the waypoint between those contacts. What I've done as well is I've set my DDD range to 50 and that will come into play later. Now as we're getting closer we see our radar picking up the enemy contacts and we see that in the DDD that it's painting them right there and we also see it on the TID that we now not only have the data link track but also the radar track. Now, the crucial part here is the position of the enemy, and I don't mean like the position on the map, I mean the position relative to us, and that is, for once, the bearing, and second of all, uh, the altitude in radar angle. So at what angle does the radar actually paint the target? And we see, since we're at 25,000 feet, and they're at 30,000 feet, that they're being painted at about co-altitude, so when the radar is pointing straight ahead and not up or down. So now I can reduce the number of bars I'm searching at and still keep track of the target, which is now very important because the enemy is getting closer. I have to switch to TWS manual in order to launch Phoenixes, and TWS manual of course doesn't do a nade bar th search, but until I'm getting close to my launch range, I want to keep searching high and wide in order to detect any possible enemies that might be sneaking up on me. But now we're close enough, we can switch to TWS manual and again just elevation and bars in order to keep track of our opponents. Now here it's really easy since Iceman is flying straight and level and they are almost co-altitude with us, so I just have to keep the radar pointed straight ahead. Of course, a real pilot in a real situation will have to maneuver, put them offset left or right, and the enemy might be climbing or descending or just be generally higher or lower than us. So our job at this point is to move the radar antenna left, right, up and down to keep the enemy in the middle of our cone. So we want to be focused on our antenna elevation and azimuth. Now what I see a lot of new rears do is play around with the tit cursor. Now there is no reason we want to be playing around with the tit curve at this point. All the information we need is already on the display. We have the bearing of the flight, we have a vector of the flight, and we have the altitude of the flight, given in ten thousands, which is accurate enough for our tactical thinking. And of course the range given by our range indication. The only thing I need the tit cursor for is when I want to highlight a flight to then make it my new next launch which happens a lot of time when I'm the wingman, lead is targeting lead and I'm targeting the wingman. Of course, my system prioritizes lead and therefore I have to switch. And all this time I'm of course making sure that the enemy flight is still in the middle of my radar cone. I'm checking on the top on the DDD that the middle one of my bars is painting the target and I'm checking on the TID that they're in the middle of the cone as well. As we're getting closer, I'm adjusting the range of my TID to make sure I get a better overview. Now we're getting closer and closer to the point where we might want to launch weapons. So normally, if we had a real pilot, we would now turn back onto the target, back from an offset. Of course, we never had an offset with Iceman, so we're still flying straight at them. And would go into afterburners to give the missile more energy. Pulling the nose up brings even more energy into the missile. Now that of course means that we are busy in the back seat keeping the enemy flight in the middle of our TWS radar cone. Now we're close enough, we're gonna launch two fox trees on the two targets, never of course forget the call, and as we launch them you see that the priority 1 and 2 is changing to the number of seconds until the missile will probably impact. 
Now one problem is at this point that the pit bull indication is not yet implemented. So we can only guess at what point precisely the missile has gone pit pull. But we are already getting ready for it. We have to think about the next step. Of course keeping the enemy in the middle of the radar cone is hard at this point because a human pilot will be turning left or right creating an offset to the hostile threats because they might as well be launching on us. So we are now adjusting our antenna to still track both the enemy flights. And here comes the crucial part. We know at some point the enemy is going to turn away and probably be in the notch and therefore we won't be able to simply keep tracking him with the TWS. So you got to be ready for the second the enemy changes course. So you know you might not be able to see him anymore on your TWS, so you got to work with a different mode. A mode that is not pulse doppler, but pulse, so you can still track him even if he pulls to the notch right away. So what we're going to use is we're going to use pulse search. So remember we set our DDD to 50 miles, which didn't matter up until now because we were using pulse doppler modes, and in pulse doppler modes it doesn't show range, it shows closure rate. But now switching to pulse search it will show range, because your DDD is now at a 50 mile scale. You've also switched your hand control unit to radar mode so that with your cursor you can pull a single target track right out of the DDD. Now you have to build a mental image. You know he's in the middle of your radar cone because that's where you've been keeping him the whole time so your antenna elevation should be in the right spot. You know his range. At this time he's at around 20-25 miles, so pretty much in the middle of the DDD, and you know where he is relative to your nose, in that case slightly to the right, so you know as soon as you switch to pulse search where he's gonna turn up on your DDD. You're staring him down, and as soon as he moves, you hit pulse search, half press the trigger, and put your cursor right on where you know he is, and you should see the radar return straight away. You can press full trigger, and you got the single target track. Lead is turning, pulled search, half press trigger, there he is, single target track. And that was pretty bad. I was looking a good four or five miles too far at first. But you get the point. If you get a bit of practice there, as soon as he tries to notch you or is in danger of entering the notch, you can put a single target track on him. Now this doesn't matter for the Phoenix because the Phoenix is close to being Pitbull or already Pitbull at that point even though we don't get a uh, confirmation for that yet in the F-14 and DCS. Uh, but you have now a single target track on it and it doesn't matter if you now run away or if you want to go in with the AM-7s and finish the job but you will keep track of him and you, he won't just disappear. Now, as I said at the start, this is just workflow. This is not a comprehensive tutorial. If you're looking for those, um, I won't do one. There have been so many people doing quality content on that. Uh, I'm going to link a couple of Orc 9 tutorials in the description. For example, uh, Carrier Air Wing 11 has a three-hour tutorial that goes into great depth. And there is as well a great tutorial by Karen that's about an hour and a half and an even quicker one by Jabbers who's put out a 25 minute tutorial. So I really hope you found this helpful and interesting. Till next time.